Hey everyone, and welcome to the StarCraft II Zombies Community YouTube channel. I am Coffee Mug, and welcome to our community YouTube channel where we do casting, streaming, and educational videos. Uh, today we're going to be doing an educational video on zombie behavior mechanics. Uh, zombie behavior mechanics is a really big part of um, zombie behavior excuse me, zombie games, because zombies have behavior. They have a way that they interact with players, and they have a way that they interact um, with uh, the environments that they move around in. And so in our video today, we're going to be watching this replay um, to learn about zombie behavior mechanics. This game had a lot of uh, good examples uh, showing how zombies behave. And so let me set the stage for you as we uh, watch this video and learn. So in this game, we uh, have uh, yellow, purple, blue, and teal. Um, and yellow on this uh, game is a Grandmaster in Zombies. And then the other team was against uh, the Big Cup, which uh, was me on my alt um, with Fat Kid, um, Costco, and Ruby Ninja, or purple, orange, uh, red and gray, and Ruby Ninja is a another Grandmaster in our community, and Fat Kid is a Diamond player. So it was a pretty competitive game, and uh, ended up going about 26 minutes. Um, so uh, with that being said, uh, let's jump in and uh, start talking about zombie behavior mechanics. So the first thing to understand about zombies is uh, how they spawn. Uh, most of the time, zombies uh, spawn by default on the center of any map. You could pick a ladder map off the street, and uh, the mod will have the zombies uh, spawning in the middle of the map. The only thing that changes that <clears throat> is at the discretion of a map maker who can actually uh, uh, decide for the zombies to spawn somewhere differently. And so this was a map I made, and I had the zombies uh, spawn here in the creases between um, the, four the four bases uh, where uh, the adjoining teams are competing and playing against each other. And so um, with that, you'll see zombies pathing, pathing in here through the entrances and in to each uh, player's base. So the first thing to understand about zombie behavior mechanics is uh, how exactly zombies uh, decide uh, to uh, attack players and what kind of goes into that decision. Well, when zombies spawn, um, they randomly choose a building on the map to attack towards. Uh, they don't choose units, they just choose buildings. Uh, zombies can see through the fog of war, um, unlike uh, <clears throat> players can, but they can't see up cliffs, which is an important distinction to make. So even though a zombie uh, spawning here um, can uh, randomly target a building somewhere on the map and move towards it, um, it doesn't mean that if these bases were on a cliff, it would be able to see up the cliff um, it just would have it as something it, it, it is targeting and uh, moving towards. Now, uh, uh, when a zombie targets um, a building, this creates an interesting behavioral mechanic where uh, the more buildings you have, um, the more uh, zombies you are likely to get. Which means that, in general, uh, Zerg players tend to get uh, a few less zombies than other races because, uh, for instance, the supply that Zerg uses is kept in a unit, Overlords, rather than in a building like depots and pylons. And so on average, Zerg tends to have um, lesser buildings, and also because Zerg's production is all kept in one building, whereas Ter Terran's production is kept in uh, multiple. And so uh, that means that when you're playing zombies, you know, the bigger 
uh, your base, the more buildings you have, um, the more likely you are to get more zombies because when zombies spawn, uh, they randomly pick a um, building on the map to target. And this is not a building that's closest to them. This is just a building anywhere. So you'll notice here when I switch to um, zombie view, you know, these zombies are walking across the map uh, to attack something, even though they're spawning right here to a base. And that's because of that behavioral mechanic um, I'm referencing. Now, secondly, uh, we get to uh, the way uh, zombies are replaced uh, once they die. There is no delay uh, between uh, when a zombie dies and uh, when it is replaced. Um, it is immediate. So as soon as these zombies are uh, killed, um, that zombie is uh, replaced uh, back here at one of the spawn points. Now on maps where there's multiple spawn points, it is randomly determined where that zombie will be replaced and uh, where the zombie will kind of spawn again. Uh, and so it's all just kind of uh, left up um, to chance. But this does mean that uh, if you are defending really close to where the zombies are spawning, it can give the optical illusion that you're getting a lot of zombies. When in actuality, uh, you're simply just killing the zombies at the same speed at which they're being replaced, which can uh, sometimes feel like uh, you're getting um, a lot of zombies. Now, uh, zombie difficulty, or sh should I say, uh, the amount of zombies that uh, spawn is not the same um, for every size of map. Uh, so, uh, for instance, this is an eight-player <coughs> game, and so uh, there are a certain amount of zombies that are, are being spawned for um, eight players. Um, but... Uh, uh, so that means then that, um, you know, if it were a smaller game, there would be uh, less zombies um, spawning. And the mathematical equation um, is generally 3.5 zombies uh, per player. So if it were a uh, 1 versus 1, then, you know, you would have um, about 7 zombies spawning a second towards the two players. And so in this uh, instance with eight players, you know, times uh, 3.5, you know, it's generally about 30 zombies um, a second that are spawning and uh, moving towards the players. And so, um, you know, this is important to, to keep in mind because this allows for a three versus three game to feel as difficult as like a six versus six game Otherwise, you could run into a situation where if the zombie spawn, you know, ratio was uh, the same in a 3 versus 3 versus a 6 versus 6, um, you would have, you know, um, very kind of uninteresting and uh, easy uh, zombie game experiences, uh, the harder, uh, the bigger the games were. Now, zombie uh, spawns do cap at around 200, uh, which means that uh, zombies will spawn uh, that 3.5 times the number of players per second uh, until they reach about 200. And once they reach about 200, uh, the zombie spawning uh, slows down and ultimately stops. And this can create some very interesting zombie behavior mechanics uh, because let's say, for instance, uh, a player is on an island, or let's say, uh, for instance, um, a player is, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, hiding behind rocks or the zombies are hiding behind rocks, you can run into a situation where uh, because the zombies are continuously spawning in this position that's unreachable to a player, uh, that eventually the, the player uh, will either uh, stop uh, getting zombie spawns or the player will stop seeing zombies spawning altogether. And so this behavior mechanic uh, can be um, an important uh, thing to kind of realize. Um, 
when uh, playing zombies if you're ever playing a map where there are zombies spawning behind a rock or you're on an island uh, to know that the cap is um, around 200. So as you see here, um, this is the zombie spawner. It's just an invisible structure that the map maker places um, to determine uh, where he wants the zombies uh, to spawn outside of the middle of the map. So that's uh, kind of what I was referencing uh, at the start. So next is uh, a very interesting mechanic when it comes to uh, zombie behavior. And that is the way that walls um, impact zombie behavior, the way that walls impact uh, zombie behavior. So here we see with um, uh, teal um, a, a wall. And uh, well, actually, this isn't a very good wall. But uh, if he were to add a building here, um, teal would have a wall. And walls um, really affect um, how uh, zombie uh, zombies behave because when uh, there's a wall it uh, affects a zombie's ability to do that targeting of a of a building that I uh, mentioned earlier so um, for instance um, if uh, a zombie were to uh, attack a player who didn't have a wall that zombie would find the easiest path to get to that building, which for teal would be uh, through this area, and for orange is through this big open base. And so all these zombies are theoretically attacking towards different buildings here. Now, when they reach these units, they'll attack those units. And so, um, you know, that uh, then, you know, causes the player to have to interact with the zombies, but uh, mechanically the zombies are just attacking towards buildings. But once there's a wall in place, it affects the zombies' ability to target the buildings uh, behind that wall. Now it's a misconception that uh, when you wall, the zombies are no longer targeting um, the buildings behind the wall. In actuality, uh, the zombies simply uh, default to a secondary mechanic where they try and reach the building uh, from another angle. And so this can create situations where the zombies then uh, move alongside uh, a player's base in order to maybe reach a building uh, like back here. Uh, like the turret, or um, much like we see here happening with yellow, the zombies, um, because yellow has walled with his tanks, tanks when they siege create a wall uh, to the the zombie pathing. Uh, what ca what then happens is the zombies try and find uh, the closest point around a player's base to try and still reach that building uh, they're targeting. For all intents and purposes, um, you can simply think of walling as blocking a zombie's ability uh, to reach uh, that building. And so the zombies then will only target buildings that are in the player's wall. But for a more nuanced understanding of that me mechanic, they are still attacking towards that building, but they'll do it on <clears throat> they'll do it around the edges of a player's base. Which means that if you're playing a map where your wall so happens to be the closest point that a zombie can reach, um, even if you're walling, uh, zombies will still attack through your wall. Which is why sometimes on certain maps uh, walling doesn't actually work very well. Next uh, we get to um, detector zombies. And detector zombies are uh, these uh, bigger zombies with a shield, like we see here, um, usually colored, um, that have the word detector on them. And detector zombies um, have a 2% chance of, uh, of spawning. Um, 
every uh, 1.5 minutes, every 1.5 every clock minutes. And so that means that uh, every uh, 1.5, uh, 1.25 minutes, there's a 146% opportunity for a, um, a zombie to, each and every zombie to turn into a detector. Um, and this is important to realize because zombies never spawn as a detector. Zombies always transform into a detector. And every zombie has a 146% chance or a 2% chance of turning into a wall, which, or excuse me, a, tra uh, um, a detector, which means that uh, once in a while you'll have a zombie in your base and all of a sudden it'll turn into a detector. And this has killed uh, many players over the years because uh, they're right in the middle of attacking zombies like um, I was on this game. And then all of a sudden this zombie turns into a detector and now <clears throat> all the zombies attacking towards them can see burrowed or cloaked units and now the players in trouble. And so this is something to consider when you're uh, kind of battling it out and interacting with zombies that there's uh, a one in um, a 46 chance or 2% chance that zombies, that each and every zombie will transform into uh, a detector um, as they're moving around in the base. Um, every minute and 25 seconds. Uh, another interesting uh, mechanic when it comes to uh, zombie behaviors is the way that zombies burrow when they get close to dying. And so um, you can see here with, uh, you know, uh, yellow or excuse me, orange, we have some zombies that uh, were burrowed back here. Um, and this is a mechanic uh, that um, causes zombies to uh, burrow when they get close uh, to uh, dying. And uh, the reason for this mechanic is to uh, just make it a bit more challenging for the player to um, not just, you know, <clears throat> steamroll zombies, but instead give zombies an opportunity to burrow and heal and then pop up at a later opportunity um, in order to uh, then try and defeat a player. Um, and zombies, when they do burrow, um, you know, they regenerate health, uh, much like uh, roaches do when they burrow, so slightly quicker uh, and slightly faster. And when they when they burrow and when they unburrow, you know, is, is kind of an approximation. I've heard it said that it's you know, when it's like less than 10% of health is when they burrow, and then when they're over like 30 or 40% health is when they kind of unburrow. Uh, but uh, to put it simply, they burrow when they get close to dying, and they unburrow uh, when they've healed some health. Um, so as we move along here, um, another mechanic uh, to uh, zombie behavior is uh, something that players don't often deal with or run into very often, but it is something that exists and is important to uh, kind of understand when you're um, playing zombies. And that is that um, some melee units, when they kill uh, zombies, or excuse me, are killed by zombies, um, actually refund uh, that melee unit's cost back to the player. And this was a mechanic that uh, Smile who is the creator of uh, Zombie Bounty, um, added in order to help players who maybe are needing to kind of defend um, zombie with melee units, which if you don't know this, melee units are typically terrible at defending against zombies because um, they can't shoot them at a distance before they reach their bases. And uh, the math on that is 90% um, for zealots, zerglings, and ultralisks, and 75% of the melee units cost for hellbats and archons. And so if a player finds himself in a position where they're killing zombies with archons or zealots, um, they will get a portion of the cost of that unit uh, back to them, that melee unit back to them, when that um, melee unit dies. 
Now, uh, zombies, uh, when they are attacking a player, have a very interesting uh, mechanic, and that is that they take damage um, equal to the damage they are dealing uh, to their health. So, uh, for instance, um, as we watch, you know, these zombies um, attack yellow, um, currently these zombies are doing about 21 damage. If these zombies were to hit these tanks, uh, these zombies would deal 21 damage but also take on 21 damage um, to their bodies um, as they attack. And this is uh, again another behavioral mechanic that helps um, against zombies uh, swarming and overwhelming players. Um, so for instance uh, on certain maps when zombies wander into a player's base early or uh, zombies um, you know are perhaps maybe in the middle of taking down your defenses there can be an opportunity to salvage your base uh, as the zombies lose health in their attack with units as weak or feeble as probes or SCVs or even you know marines and zealots because the zombies are losing health as they um, attack. Now uh, along with that uh, zombies are unique in the sense that they are light, armored, biological, mechanical, and massive which means they take maximum damage from every unit. And if you don't know what I mean by that Every unit has two types of damage that it deals. It has its default damage, and then it has the damage it deals to certain types of units. So mortals, for instance, deal 26 damage, but then 65 to armored. And lurkers deal 26 damage, and then 39 to armored. And then locusts are the same, and uh, colossi, and etc. are the same as well. And uh, this is important to, uh, to be aware of because um, certain units have, uh, deal really uh, high damage to certain uh, uh, types of armor. So tanks, for example, deal 70, uh, just like liberators do, and immortals um, deal about uh, 70 when they're fully upgrade, upgraded um, to armored. Uh, and so this is a mechanic to take advantage of when you're trying to decide uh, what kind of unit uh, to defend uh, zombies with. And so, for instance, with Terran, units like Marauders and Tanks and Liberators can be very good. Uh, for Protoss, it tends to be um, Immortals and Colossi. And then for Zerg, it tends to be um, Lurkers because <coughs> they do extra damage to Armored. Uh, of which uh, zombies are um, considered. Now, zombies are interesting in the way that uh, units kind of perceive them. So even though all zombies are ground units and zombies could never can never fly over, um, you know, uh, edges on the maps, uh, range zombies are actually uh, partially considered air units which means that you will see instances where turrets or Vikings or any kind of AA will actually um, attack ranged zombies. And this is a mechanic that was uh, designed to uh, help with the elimination of ranged zombies because they tend to be uh, slightly more difficult um, than melee zombies because of their ability to uh, shoot from afar. And so uh, you will notice that your Vikings or your Phoenixes um, or your turrets uh, will attack um, uh, ranged zombies because they're partially considered uh, an air unit. Um, but uh, what's unique about um, air zombie, excuse me, range zombies is that they're also considered massive. And because they're considered massive, it means that range zombies, unlike melee zombies, um, break force fields, break Protoss force fields uh, when they're placed down, much like um, Ultralisks um, break force fields um, when they are placed down. While uh, me melee zombies um, won't because they're not um, considered uh, massive. 
This also means that, um, you know, uh, melee zombies um, can be picked up by uh, phoenixes while uh, range zombies uh, cannot be uh, picked up. After that, we then uh, get into how uh, zombie damage kind of progresses over time. Uh, so zombies don't stay the same difficulty uh, uh, all game. They actually get harder over uh, the course of a game. And so as we see here at minute 25 in the game, zombies are up to 25 health and 405, excuse me, 405 health and 25 damage. And that's because every uh, 1.25 minutes on the game clock here, uh, zombie damage increases by 1, and its health increases by either 5 or 10 HP for an average of 7.5 HP, which means that over uh, the course of a game, the longer it goes, uh, even if zombies started at like times 2, they uh, will eventually get to um, times 3, um, excuse me, times 4, times 5, and uh, their damage will increase as well. And because zombie, zombie HP can increase anywhere between 5 and 10, uh, sometimes a game will feel, the zombies will feel harder than they do on uh, other games you've played because maybe the randomized health increase made, gave the zombies, you know, 10 HP every time 1 minute and 25 seconds passed compared to maybe another game where it only gave them, you know, 5 health. Uh, with that, we then uh, finish with two more uh, mechanics, which uh, we'll have to cover here um, as we uh, get to the end of this game. And uh, that is, uh, first of all, um, zombie pathing, uh, and then second of all, um, zombie bounty, uh, the zombie bounty stalemate. And so uh, we will um, watch another game to talk about these last two mechanics because um, they are uh, important to understand and are uh, very important when it comes to understanding zombie behavior and zombie mechanics. So let's finish our tutorial today on zombie behavior mechanics uh, by talking about uh, two final uh, mechanics in zombie bounty. Um, zombie anti-stalemate and then zombie pathing. So we'll start with zombie anti-stalemate um, because it's a rather straightforward mechanic. And zombie anti-stalemate is a mechanic that activates at around 36 um, minutes on the game clock that will incrementally make zombies attack quicker attack harder and move faster um, much uh, much more um, quickly than uh, the way they normally increase in difficulty. And this is to um, help games that are going on too long to come to a conclusion by uh, making the zombies increasingly more difficult um, uh, until the zombies defeat one player or another. Uh, now this game is uh, on a 2 vs 2 map called Cold Plain, um, which has players uh, uh, defending two entrances into each of their bases, and then there are expos in the corner. So if this game were to go on to 36 minutes, you would see uh, these zombies here in the middle um, increasing in uh, 0.125 movement speed, 10% uh, attack speed, uh, an extra 5 health on top of what they normally get every 1 minute and 25 seconds, which is that interval I discussed earlier um, that indicates that, that that is when zombies get uh, harder and harder throughout a game. Now, uh, after, uh, uh, now before the stalemate, there's also uh, zombie pathing. 
And zombie pathing is a really important part of uh, of playing zombies because it um, can really impact um, how you defend and how the zombies behave, and also can allow a player to determine um, uh, how a zombie moves towards their base or, or behaves because there's a bunch of different factors that impact pathing. So as I've already mentioned, when zombies spawn, they randomly pick a building on the map uh, and they attack towards that building. Um, but um, that pathing functions a very certain specific way. And the best way to think about how zombie pathing works is to kind of imagine it like uh, water. To kind of imagine it like water. Zombies are always finding um, the path of least resistance. Uh, which means that once they spawn in the middle, uh, they're going to cut as closely uh, to cliff edges as they can, and they're going to move in as straight of a line as they can move uh, to get to their intended target. And zombie pathing is something that players can exploit if they're if they understand it correctly, because um, as we're seeing here. Uh, with um, blue, he understands that zombies uh, find the path of these resistance and will come along the cliff so he can build his uh, defenses there. But there's also another uh, interesting part of, of zombie uh, pathing behavior that's uh, important to be aware of, and that is that when you wall off one side of your base, like blue has, um, zombies will try and find uh, another path uh, to get to that player through, which allows players to control um, zombie uh, um, movement and pathing towards their base, kind of like Teal is doing here unsuccessfully um, by uh, sending the zombies uh, down another path uh, besides the one with a wall. And so when you can really get good at understanding um, zombie pathing and uh, the ways that walls can impact zombie pathing, it can create a situation where uh, you can wall at strategic places and send those zombies uh, through another path uh, to get to you and also take advantage of the ledges uh, that um, zombies are pathing around like uh, blue is uh, to kill them before they uh, get into your base and so uh, for the sake of simplicity you know thinking of zombie pathing like water um, and 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 thinking of walling like blocking off water and sending that water another route is kind of the easiest way to understand zombie um, pathing and how to kind of uh, defend against it. So with that being said, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, video on zombie um, behavior and zombie mechanics and hopefully learned a, f a thing or two uh, so that the next time you're playing zombies um, you can improve the way you're defending against them and attacking them and dealing with them to uh, yeah become the best zombie player you can become. So until next time, uh, good luck and have fun.